Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to the Jersey to Vegas podcast. It is episode number 35. 35. That was very surprising to me because I definitely had it in my mind uh, before I started this, but I definitely couldn't think about it as I was going. And hopefully, you guys are doing good. Um, if you're watching the video and my lip looks a little swollen, I bit through my my lip and now have like eight cankasaurs in there. So it's super painful um, and it hurts to eat and or even drink water, which I don't have anyway. So if it looks weird or I lisp or if I bite my my lip again and scream, that's probably going to hopefully not happen. But if it does, just excuse me for a minute and uh, let me recollect myself because I'll definitely be in a lot of pain um, just as this whole weekend. I got sick, uh, kind of. I don't know if it was a food thing or if it was an actual illness, but I took a, a COVID test, an at-home one, you know, because I'm not going to the fucking doctor to take a COVID test. It's ridiculous. Like you're, They're not going to do anything. The only time you get a COVID test at the doctor's is when you need to call out of work, right, because you need a note and or excuse. Otherwise, you kind of just ride the boat, and um, that's kind of how I felt. But it wasn't, I, I, it came out negative. Um, I don't think, obviously, it wasn't COVID. Um, but I ate something in some salad. I don't even know. It was a fucking salad. And I just felt it, like, immediately. I was like, this just doesn't taste right. I looked at the ingredients. The only thing in there that might have been suspect is a thing called spices. So you don't know what, what that is in, what's in it. And it shut me down, like... I felt like I had the flu, I had body aches, uh, body pains, I couldn't move, even though I still had to do stuff, I still did it, uh, I just wasn't in it, my mouth is fucking killing me right now, and that's why the cancer is probably inflamed more, is because of the, the shit that I ate, and just trying to ride that, that bad boy through, today I feel a little better, um, coming off it, but it's something that is always still to me just... A, f- a phenom, ding dong, ding dong. That's Sage going ding dong, ding dong. Um, a phenom, which means I don't know what it means, but to me, uh, to me, that means something that's un- unexplainable, and it's how it is. You know, with this uh, condition, it's like an autoimmune uh, disease. The, um, they call it nightshade, so it attacks my immune system, and it kind of lets everything else in, and I, I, I don't know, I don't know, so whether the food was being, or protecting, let's see, let me, see, let me say it again, my body protects itself from the food, which means it's almost like a Trojan horse, now it allows other viruses, or other bacteria, or germs to to invade and it takes over the body so when i eat something bad it kind of shuts down my whole body and now it'll allow other things to go inside which is why i was like shit i wonder if it's covid um for the first time ever (laughs) but it wasn't so i'm still riding i'm still riding a horse hopefully not the trojan horse but the horse feeling like dick uh today i don't know if you could tell by my voice it just, I, I don't know. I woke up with crying. Um, it just did. Um, I, yeah, I can't explain it. Like that, That's the hardest part about this shit is like, it's hard to explain how you feel so great one day and then the next day you feel like the world is going to end. It doesn't make sense to me. You know, it doesn't make sense. And I I try to backtrack on how I used to feel back in the days of, you know, before I was even diagnosed. And I remember these days. You know, these are the days that I would go up and I would have forced myself to get up and I would just go work out. And I would do something extra um, to to keep my mind off it. And or I go for walks, you know. So those are the things that I used to do. Now I don't have that ability to do so. So I have to just sit here and learn how to cope with the emotions that are happening. And today it's not a, it's a guy on a motorized scooter. What's up? He said hi. He waved. If you can't tell, there's a window over here and then there's a light right here. So you can see the production. So if they actually are creepy and they want to look into my window, well, they can see everything that's happening. 
and how it goes. So anyway, um, the moods don't swing. The moods are changing. They change. And I don't understand why it's so dramatic and why it feels so hard and why it feels so tough to even get through a day. I don't, I want this day to be fucking over. You have no idea how bad I just want to, I don't want to say die because then people get concerned, right? But if you want to, you want to use that phrase, yeah, I want to fucking die. You know, like that's how bad I, I want this day to be over, but I want to be strong enough to be alive. You know, because obviously if I die, then it's all over for me. And that's not going to happen. You know, I'm not that weak. I'm stronger than that. That's for fucking damn sure. But I'm not going to lie that I don't feel like doing it. And for no fucking reason at all. <laughs> all I can think about, guys, today is is crank. That's all I think about. It's crazy how much I think about it. And how much has changed already. With me leaving. Like, why am I still here? Why am I here? You know, that goes through my mind today. Why am I fucking here? Why are we even here? How the fuck did we get here? What was it that, that brought us here? I know. And then I go, let's go back. But for what? Everything's different. Everything's changing. You know, and then I think about all the good things that has happened since I left. Like, people have grown. You know, people have done things for themselves. People are meeting new people. They're going to different gyms. They're building different relationships. Some people they probably never, would probably never met if I never left. People are open businesses, doing things that they never thought they can do. But they're doing it. You have no fucking, you have no idea how proud I am for those people that do that. Fucking super proud. But then I think about, what if I did stay? What would what would would have changed? Probably nothing. Would I have been better? You know, would I feel better being over there? Would I have felt better about myself? Would I be able to even run the business? You know, those are the questions that that run through my head. And I'm sure I would have done it because I don't know anything else. But I don't know. I don't know what, what's to come of this. And that's when I have to pull myself into the, the present moments. You know, and always go back to be in the present moment. It's fucking hard. It's hard, guys. You know, and the one thing that drives me, and I, was, I even had it on my brows, I think I closed it though, was guilt. Like, guilt beats the shit out of me. It literally beats me up, you know, and I wish it didn't, but it does. And there's little things that you have to do to to help yourself when that, that guilt sets in is literally be present. You know, if you want to know how I'm present, um, I do a couple exercises. Actually, I just look at my kids, you know, and that's really it because I know that in this moment, in this the moment now, that's why I'm here. That's why I spend time with the most. That's what I'm doing. You know, I'm trying to be present. Today I went to the park, and I started to drift. I was with Sage at the park, and I started to drift away. I started to fucking go, and I thought I was going to start crying in the middle of the fucking park. And then instead, I just started running around with her. You know, and I thought about the things that I didn't have. And I didn't have, my parents worked. You know, they didn't take me to the park on a Monday. It was always either Saturday or Sunday. So I'm giving this experience of a lifetime to these children because of something that I wasn't, I, I never had. You know, I played with other kids on the block, unsupervised. <laughs> and it's a little different when it's your parents that are there for you. And I hope that they remember these moments because I don't remember moments at her age. You know, I only remember the weird stuff. Like the things where I got caught or things that were done to me or things that were like uh, disciplinary. I remember the punishments. I never really remembered a lot of the good stuff. And I hope that they get the good stuff. You know, that they remember all the good things. All the good things. You know, running around at the park, 
McDonald's on a special day, making ice cream Sundays on Sunday, just random trips to the Dave and Buster's so that you can see their smiles on their faces, things like that. You know, those are the, the things that I think about that I'm doing now, that we're doing now to keep present. But when it like, when panic attack, <laughs> panic attacks come, I said panic attack, <laughs> panic attacks come around, those things you just have to ride. You know, and being in the present moment is very important when you have a panic attack because they can last, I think, 5 to 15 minutes long. Now, nothing's going to have, ha- nothing physically is going to happen to you, although it feels like it. It is going to be a roller coaster of up and down because that's what it's going to feel like. And it's going to feel kind of rough with emotions. It's going to feel lightheaded, dizzy. They say that you should just sit down, lay down, be somewhere stable because, you, you know, the panic attacks are, can make you lose control. And for me, I do a lot of the senses. Uh, I forget what it is. I, there's different numbers for it, like 54321, for, like, things you see, things you hear, things you touch, smell, and taste. I believe those are, the, those are in the subjective order. Um, five things you see, four things you hear, three things you, I don't, touch, three things you could touch, two things you can, what's the next one? I don't know, something, and then one thing you can taste. But for me, I try to, or smell and taste, or whatever. Uh, for me, I try to do five of everything. Like, I try to be as present as possible. Like, what's five things I see? And I'll start looking around, and I'll find the five things. And then, what's five things I can smell? Even though I can't smell something, I'll try to pretend like I can fucking smell something. I'll really dig deep and try to smell, like, cherry pie, even though there's no cherry pie. I'm thinking about cartoons right now. That's why I've been watching a lot of Tom and Jerry. That's why I referenced cherry pie. Who the fuck makes cherry pie, by the way? Are we, are we 1940? And you're going to put it on a windowsill? Is that where the cherry pie is going to go, Pete? On the windowsill? Fucking dick. <laughs> uh, five things I can hear. Five things I can touch. Obviously, you can't taste five things, but you kind of get the gist of it, right? You're trying to be in the present moment. You're trying to be as present as possible because I'm not, you can't ignore panic attacks, it's what do you feel? I feel like I'm going to fucking die. Okay, cool. Uh, what's it feel like? Well, I feel like very lightheaded. And I feel like I'm going to faint. Okay, cool. What else do you feel? My heart is fucking off the fucking roof. What else do you feel? You know, and that's kind of, you have to recognize those things. But understand you're going to be okay. Right? A lot of people, they do it and they feel those emotions and they feel those things and they panic. And then they try to, they lose themselves rather than this is going to be it. This is what's happening. Breathe. Just fucking breathe. Breathe. Find things around the room. Breathe. What's going on here? Breathe. Because it's going to last 5 to 15 minutes long. But once you're done, it's done. It goes away. And for those yous that don't... For those yous... There's my jersey. For those yous that don't have panic attacks, they fucking suck. And you don't want that shit. Ever. Ever crazy it's crazy it's crazy it's really crazy pants um but yeah i just try to be present you know i try to be uh here with my kids with me with this camera right now because i could think about everything else i have to do today but this is one thing that is important to me you know to talk i didn't want to do it again I feel like it's like two weeks in a row. I didn't want to fucking do this. It's crazy. It's so hard. It's so hard to just pull the camera out, put the light on, turn the fucking computer on, and start going. I'm not doing this for you guys. I'm doing this for me. You know, this is something I really enjoy doing. But that's how tough it is because you don't even want to do the things you love doing. I was going to go to jiu-jitsu today. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't. But I wanted to. But then I didn't want to. And I battled myself for an hour. I had my stuff ready. And then I decided, no, don't do it. It's, it's fucking crazy how fast you can talk yourself out of something. I think I said the word crazy a thousand times today already. 
So yeah, I've been thinking about uh, thinking about crank a lot. Thinking about training a lot, and really just thinking about people a lot. You know, I don't think I'm actually thinking about the workouts. You know, I don't think I'm actually thinking about the things that we've done. I'm just thinking about like the fun times, and it's hard. It's hard because. The biggest thing you say is don't live in the past. And it's, I get it. You know, you can't drive looking through the rear of a mirror. I get it. So then why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to, to let go? Because like one month or one week, I feel like I'm okay. And I let it all go. And then the next week, it feels like I never left. And I miss it so much. And I miss people so much. What is it? Why is it so hard to to let go of the past? Because the past was all I had? Because the past was the best time of my life? Anything can trigger it. What actually probably triggered it the most was I read a card. I was looking for Otis's birth certificate because Otis is going to be two years old. He's a giant mess. And he's going to be two years old. Um... This year, so for this year, this week, no shit, this year, Dick. Uh, it's February tenth, but next to it, it was a card from Nat, and pretty much it was our one year anniversary card that she wrote to me. I'm gonna scratch my ear, and she outlined or timelined little things that happened month to month. You know, like the first date, the first kiss. Um, the first trip we took together, and then the next one was, it's, remember it said, like, the Club H era, era closed, which means I left Club H, and then it says I'm now a business owner, which means I opened up Crank, you know, it's 2010, and it kind of hit me, you know, because uh, the writing she put and how proud she was of me, I'm sure she is still, you know. Um, the great things that are to come, and there were. So it's almost like everything that was written on that card came true. But now it's just like, it's just a memory. And is that is that all I am now? And is that, that's what I think about too. Like, is that all I am? Am I just a fucking memory? Because you can't, can't see me. You can't see me. You can talk to me but you're not next to me. You know, for the people that, you know, probably don't even, I don't talk to at all, like I'm just a memory in their mind. When we had such like a good relationship, I'm just a thought. I'm not, I'm no longer a being. I'm no longer in the present. And that's kind of tough to uh, to deal with. And it's hard for me to let go. I don't want to let go. Like, why? You guys are great. You guys are fucking awesome. You guys are the best people I ever hung out with in my life. You know how many friends I have here? Zero. Zero still. And they say the first year is the hardest. It's funny that it's the first year. It's like, I don't even want to make it past this year. <laughs> Can I fucking make a new year somewhere else? But there's so many good things that has happened. And I think one of the best things, honestly, is I haven't fought with my parents at all. You know, and we used to fight like every week. Argue, run out. If you read the book coming in, like I've fought with them. The times where, you know, it, it really messed me up. Obviously, you can't read the book. It's not out yet. But it's actually coming. So it's coming out. Can't wait. But yeah, that's like one of the best things. Like I haven't fought with them. Their relationship there is better. Their relationship there is so much more solid. Almost like we miss each other. You know, we FaceTime all the time. Whereas before, we would just like argue. And then we would just try to make up. And then the next day we'd argue again. You know, so that distance is creating something. Nat has an awesome job and she's doing great 
she has her stress. I'm sure it was a really rough time. If you've listened to the couple episodes uh, when we first got here, it was definitely a nightmare for her. But now she's understanding, learning what like a real boss should be, kind of what a real job in corporate. Like, she never really took a job on. She just took a job on part time in order to just for her mental for her mental state. Because she was with the kids all day long. And she knew that's not something she just wanted to do. So she would take part-time jobs. And we were lucky back in Jersey that someone could watch the kids in the morning. And then I had off in the afternoons. And then she'd come home. And then I'd go back to work. It was a great schedule. It it worked out. But here she's learning so much more. And is this, like, going to take her somewhere else? You know, is this her just learning? So she goes somewhere else and does something better? For herself, you know, this, that would have never happened if we didn't take the job. This podcast would have never happened <laughs> if I didn't lose my shit and end up in the psych ward. Probably never fucking would have happened. God, I miss that place. The chicken was great. <laughs> the chicken sucked. I couldn't even eat it. I didn't even eat when I was there because I couldn't eat any of the foods. So I ate cornflakes. Half the time in Raisin Bran, because I was allergic to everything, and they didn't alter my food. So everyone had, like, potatoes and chicken nuggets and pizza one night. You know, it was, like, cafeteria food. No rice pilaf. I couldn't have any of it. So I ate fruit. I ate br- breakfast all, all day long, and then I was excited for breakfast if they had scrambled eggs. But then if they had omelets, I was really upset because I couldn't have the omelet. But I don't miss that place. But I'm happy I went. I'm happy I went there. Because I'd never probably get better. No, I'd probably do just be doing the same cycle over and over again, never recognize it. I would end it up there at some point. I remember Isaiah said that to me when we were talking, like when it first happened. We kinda just talked. He's like, Don't you think you probably would have ended up there anyway? I was like, Most likely. At some point I definitely would have ended up there. It was just a matter of time. And I think back of how I felt in there. And I miss people. You know, I I felt bad for doing it to my family. I felt guilty for just leaving. I wasn't I would I didn't want to leave. I was forced to leave. Otherwise, they would have to arrest me and then pretty much get me and bring me inside because I did something that I was uh, that is not allowed. And uh, they said either you do it or they'll do it for me. So I have volunteered to do it myself. So I did it under under my own uh, circumstances. But I definitely, uh, no matter how many times people call or text. It just doesn't feel the same. I feel, I'm sorry if this is like a fucking melancholy piece of shit. I feel like this is an acoustic version of my podcast. <laughs> like, I would just start crying for no reason. <laughs> um, my next hit is called... Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just so... I'm, I don't know what else to say. Because I feel like so utter shitty today. But I can't ignore that, and I'm not gonna fake it. You know, imagine if I was just podcast like, "Hey, what's up, guys? We're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about energy and how much energy you should have today. Calories count. Okay, come on, shut up, shut the fuck up, Pete. I'm not gonna come up here and give you some bullshit ass fucking podcast on on how it is uh, or how I am feeling, you know, or how I am doing, because then that wouldn't be real. That wouldn't be a real thought. And I definitely want to shout out um, a girl, Jenny from the Block. Now, Jenny from the Block, <laughs> that's her Instagram handle. Uh, she reached out, and she's fucking strong. You know, she's a strong person. You can tell. But you can tell she hurts. And most people that hurt, 
and can still be here are the strongest. You know, quick backstory: she moved here. She's from New Jersey. She's actually from Belleville. She moved here in Vegas. Kind of uh, ended up reaching out to her. Never saw her. I tried to, you know, get to her art shows every every now and then, but um, I couldn't. And you know, we just keep in touch via DM. And you can tell. You can tell pain through words. But you could also tell resilience through words too. You could see that they don't want to give up. That they won't allow themselves to. You could see that they want to be better. Make a better life for themselves. No matter how hard the decision. And sometimes it's going to be hard. You know, life is going to fucking beat the shit out of you. And then we got to make more choices. Right? Life's going to fucking take you, lift you up, throw you across the country like a tornado, and then you got to fucking rebuild your house. You got to rebuild your life all over again. But based off what? Like who who you are or who you were? That's a, that's a hard question. That's a real tough question. Like do I just, am, am I just Coach Pete and that's it? So I just have to coach because that's all I fucking know? Or do I change and do something else? It's always hard. It's a hard decision. But I guess you always got to just follow your heart. You know, and sometimes maybe the circumstances at some place may not be the same in another. So if I was a trainer in New Jersey, and it was great, and I come here, and I'm a trainer here, and it wasn't great, doesn't mean if I don't go to another state, and then I'm a trainer there, and it's great again. You know, because we're just, we just identify it in the one section that we're at. Or the one place that we kind of grew ourselves to be that person. Like for me, I was a great coach over there. Will I be a great coach over here? I don't know. I don't know anybody. So maybe not. It's a, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough whirlwind of decisions that you have to make. But I always say, go with the one that's in your gut. And most of the time, whether it's tough or not, it's the right one. Because then there's no regret. You know, what's, the, what's, the, what's your gut say? Does it say change jobs or does it say, I'll just try this somewhere else? And if your gut says change jobs, well then just do it. You know, that was the decision here. It was a gut choice. Just felt right at the time. It, it probably still is. It is. It's just hard to accept. Listen to your gut. It's going to tell you what to do. Listen to yourself. Don't listen to the people. Don't listen to the noise. Don't listen to the crowds. Sit by yourself for, for a moment. And whatever question it is, just fucking reflect on it. Does this make sense for me? Yes or no? If it does, then you go with it. If it doesn't, then you don't. But what does your gut say? Most of us fucking ignore it. Most of us ignore our gut feeling when it's the best thing you have. It's the best thing you have. Now, people may not like it. That's for damn sure. People may fucking hate it. But at least you know that you made a decision based off what you thought. You made a decision based off what you think versus what do my parents think? What does she think? What does he think? What do my friends think? What do I think? What does old me think? There's a lot of people that are going to think against you. There's a lot of people that are going to influence your decision. That's why you got to fucking sit down, quiet place, figure it out, and listen to your gut. And make that decision based off that. And that's it. I'm closing on that shit. Alright guys. Thanks for coming out. I'll see you next week. This is Pete from the Jersey to Vegas podcast. Episode number 35. Peace out everybody. 
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from Pete, you can follow him on Instagram at Pete Isen. Thanks again, and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.